Hey guys, it's Kasera, and today I'm going to be doing my June week 5, July week 0 reading vlog. So yes, I am still in New Orleans. Did I plan this when I was doing my videos for this week? No, I didn't. So it should be interesting because I had planned out all of my videos for this week. I had filmed about half of them and it's on my computer in the middle of editing. And of course I didn't upload them, but obviously I'm not at home with my computer. So you guys are gonna have to wait till next week to see those videos that I had pre-planned. And this week's gonna be interesting because it'll be a little bit more like chatty style videos and things like that, as long as I don't actually like miss an upload so we shall see i don't know what's gonna happen with the week's videos but this is the end of the week you guys probably have already seen all of that last week i was in new orleans as well i edited that video on my phone so it's not the best reading vlog but i did get a lot of reading done i finished two books on the vlog one was actually from last week one was from the week before and also i finished volumes two through five of saga which i am really really enjoying and hopefully i can get to the other volumes in that series this week because i'm really enjoying it and i kind of just want to binge read the entire entire series right now so I might actually do that this week like mind you I am traveling for work so I still have to work and things like that but I have time after I come home from work so hopefully I can get to those and if you missed last week's reading vlog I will link it up in the card to you guys but like always I'm going to start out with the books that I'm currently reading which right now I'm only currently reading one book mostly because I put all the books that I left at home on pause and I only brought two books with me one of them I'm currently reading which is Tigana by Guy Gabriel K so far I'm really really enjoying this I think I went into it with a little high expectations though because like everyone when they talk about this book they absolutely love it and it's a low fantasy very political book which is just like the type of book that I absolutely love and I do love it I just don't love it if you know what I mean I feel like this is one of those books that I really expected to be like one of my top 10 favorite books of all time and it's not there yet, but that's okay. I'm not even done with it yet. I am right there now. So like I'm close to the end, but I'm not quite there. And you know me, I love a good finale. So there is definitely a chance for this book to make up for itself and give me a great finale and become one of my favorite books of all time. But right now it is just a solidly great political fantasy book and I'm really enjoying it. So that's the only book that I'm currently reading. But like I said, I'm in the middle of Saga. I finished volume five. I plan to start volume six tonight. And I also want to start on my July TBR, which just came out this morning. And I'm really excited for my July TBR. Problem is, I left all of those books at home. So yeah, there is one of the books that is an ebook. So I have access to it, which is The Sword of Kaigen. So there's a good chance that I might start that one this week. I'm really excited for it. I am going to try and also get some B-roll of New Orleans for you guys and put it in this vlog. But that's only if I end up editing it at home rather than here so we'll see right now it is the morning of sunday june 18th and last night i decided to start the song of achilles by madeline miller i don't know why i just felt like i needed a different audiobook because i've been spending so much time on the tagana audiobook and i really want to read that one more physically especially since i'm on the last part of it now so i wanted to start a new audiobook so i wouldn't be tempted to listen to that audiobook too much and this is the poll book that you guys chose for me to read in july and I'm really enjoying it right now. Like I thought Cersei was really good, but I'm really enjoying the Song of Achilles. I really like the audiobook narrator and I really like Madeline Miller's writing style. It is really great. And I'm really, really excited to see where this book is going because I have an idea of like the story of Achilles, but I don't know it that well. So this should be really fun. Also last night I started and finished volume six of Saga. I really enjoyed it. I'm so, so excited to continue on with this series it's such a fantastic series there's only three volumes left which makes me really sad but i really really loved volume six and i ended up giving it 4.25 stars and of course i started volume seven because why not and i'm really enjoying it so far i'm not super far into volume seven because i'm getting really tired last night i totally could have read and finished volume seven also if i really wanted to but i was so tired i decided to go to sleep probably will be finishing this sometime today though because i'm about 
about like halfway through it and also really enjoying this one. It is still Sunday morning and I just finished Saga Volume 7. I am like devastated right now. I love this little family so much. Hazel is so sweet and her father Marco, oh my gosh. His storyline is just pulling at all of my heartstrings right now because he's a pacifist and he tries so hard not to be violent because he doesn't believe in violence anymore. And yet, he's always kind of forced to save his family with violence and it's just it's just so sad but I'm loving this series so much. Absolutely love Saga Volume 7 in particular and I ended up giving it 4.5 stars. Fantastic, fantastic addition to the series and I can't wait to continue on. I only got two more volumes left. I'm going to strap myself for today because I have the whole week to finish volumes 8 and 9. Honestly, I could just sit down today and binge read the rest of the series but I'm going to try and stop myself today. I'm really considering picking up 8 right now now though because I loved Seven so much. So you know how I said I was gonna stop myself from continuing on with Saga today? Well I lied because I just finished Saga Volume 8 and it was so freaking cute. I absolutely loved it. It was such a great addition to the series and I can't wait to read Volume 9 because Volume 9 is the finale and I have no idea what's gonna happen but I'm so so excited for it. So Yes, I did read Saga Volume 9, and I know it makes it look like this was all I was doing today. I swear that it's not. I've been doing tons of other stuff today. I've just been breaking up my day with a little bit of graphic novel action, and Saga is just so fast to read. I am done with the series that is out currently, and if I thought that I was devastated at the end of Volume 7, I am so heartbroken right now at the end of volume nine. Like I love these characters so much and their little family so much. And the ending, oh my gosh, I did not see it coming. Volume nine was by far my favorite volume out of all of them. It was just like kind of like action packed after action packed, like all of these great things culminating in just like one of the most heart-wrenching scenes that I've seen in the longest while. And I, part of it is just because there was a lot of things from the first volume that I feel like got paid off in this volume, which I really appreciated. But also like, I just became to love these characters so much. And some of the things that happened in this volume in particular were gut-wrenching and heartbreaking and, uh, I'm so angry right now because they are taking a hiatus on Saga that is at least a year long, potentially indefinitely, which honestly, like if that's how it ends, I'm kind of okay with it, but I'm also really not okay with it because that cliffhanger. I absolutely love Saga. For those of you who don't know what this is about, this is a sort of sci-fi fantasy graphic novel series that's following a character named Hazel whose mother is one of the wings and the father is one of the horns and their planet and moon have been at war with each other since forever but her mom and dad came together and had her but she doesn't fit in with either of the species so they've been on the run for basically her entire life and it's deeply political but very emotional and I absolutely love it. I do think it does get a little cheesy at times but it is fantastic. It's also hilarious at times. By the way, if you guys have read this, Lion Cat is my favorite. I love Lion Cat and yeah, fantastic series so far and I really want to read more in it. I'm really sad though that it's going to be a very, very long while before the next one comes out, but I am definitely there for when it does. So it is a Monday, June 29th, and I finished The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I absolutely love this. Like I loved every single thing about this book. I absolutely love the characters. I love the character relationships. There is a great romance in this, but it's kind of complex and I love the romance and I like some of the other relationships between the characters. I love the plot of this. It is devastating at times and it is action packed at times. And I love the 
the writing. I think the writing is so well done. I love Madeline Miller's writing style. I also really love the audiobook because obviously I listen to it on audio and I think the audiobook narrator does such a fantastic job. Fantastic audiobook narrator. Like I can just listen to his voice like all the time. I absolutely loved every single thing about this book and I can understand why so many people love this book. But I feel very similarly about this book as I did with Cersei in the sense that like in six months time I really don't feel like I'll even remember having read this book. Like I feel like it's very forgettable despite the fact that it is fantastic. So because of that I'm giving it 4.5 stars because I do think this is not the type of book that'll stick with me in the long run but I absolutely enjoyed it thoroughly as I was reading it. So I have to choose a new audiobook and I have like two days left in June and I don't have a whole lot of June TBR audiobooks left. I have a lot of June TBR physical books left but they're all at my house and I'm here in New Orleans. Actually they're not all at my house. I still have half a king that I have to pick up that I brought with me so I'll probably pick that up. I do think I have access to the audiobook but I really wanted to read that one physically. I didn't want to read the audiobook for that one so that should be interesting if I decide to pick that one up but I will have to be picking up another audiobook and I'm thinking about just continuing on with Tigana even though like I had planned to finish that one physically but like right now the only two books that I have access to from my June TBR is Tigana and Half a King, even though I want to read both of those physically. Two whole days left in June, so yeah. I haven't decided what I'm gonna pick up next for my audiobook, but I'll be deciding that in the next like five minutes or so, and you guys will find out in the next clip. So I decided to go with Half a King because I, I do really want to read this book, and I want to read it in the next couple of days. It's really short, so I definitely can. I'm about there now, so not super far into it, but like I said, literally just started the audiobook. I will say I recognize the audiobook narrator. He's the same narrator that narrated the Soldier Sun trilogy by Robin Hobb, which I read this year and really really liked. It's kind of weird because I'm hearing that character's voice in my head while it's a new character so like I'm automatically drawn into the story but I don't know if it's because I recognize the audiobook narrator or it's because like I just really like Joe Abercrombie's writing style so I don't know but I'm really this so far. Okay so it is Wednesday July 1st and I can't believe that we're already halfway through the year already like where did those last six months go? I have no idea. So June is over but I did manage to finish Half a King by Joe Abercrombie last night. This is such a fast-paced and fun book. I really enjoyed it. I think it's such a good like YA fantasy book. It's not the Joe Abercrombie that I love, if you know what I mean. Like, I'm still gonna continue on with the series. I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna be have a lot of fun with it. It's following a main character named Yarby, who is half a king. He only has one hand. I think his older brother dies, like, at the very beginning, so he's, like, named the king. And something happens really early on that kind of just changes his complete life trajectory. It was such a fun, fast-paced read, and I really enjoyed it. There are some really great character things things that happen in this book. I think one thing that I liked about this is like Joe Abercrombie is very good at getting into the character's emotions and feelings which he definitely excels at in this one as well as all of his other books. So I enjoyed that aspect of it. It's not one of my favorites by him. It's not one of my favorite YA books of all time or anything like that but I think it was a solid read and I gave it four stars. After that I needed to start a new audiobook so I decided to go with Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. I actually got a bunch of audiobooks that I've been waiting for for the longest while yesterday. Like I got four of them yesterday. So it was between Kindred, The City We Became, Not That Bad, and Juneteenth. Those were all four audiobooks that I've been waiting for the longest time and I just got them. I decided to go with Kindred just because Butler's been on my mind and also the City We Became, I have the physical copy of at home, so I want to wait till I get home to read that one. So Kindred was like the first choice for me. Butler has been on my mind because I recently read Dawn a couple vlogs ago, and I really loved it. And Kindred, oh my gosh, this book starts off so strong because it starts off with, this time I lost an arm, and I was just like, 
what is this book gonna be about? It is about a black woman who travels back and forth in time to like a time when slavery is very much a thing. I am not super far into it like at all, but I am so excited to see where this book is going because I can just see this being completely devastating. Like this book is going to break my heart into tiny little pieces and I am so, so ready for it. Also, Octavia E. Butler is like a prolific writer that I absolutely love. So so I cannot wait to read more of her books. Lastly, I have not made any progress on Tigana by Guy Gabriel Kay. I'm a little sad because I really wanted to finish it in June, but I also don't want to rush that book. So if I finish it this week, I'm still going to count it towards my June month because I read most of it in June. Like I only have like less than 100 pages left in it. And I'm not filming my June wrap up until like after July 4th anyway because I'm not gonna be home until July 4th is when I'm flying back so yeah I am kind of cheating with that one but I am doing it anyway because I read most of it in June and I just don't want to rush it so yeah I am excited to start on some July TBR stuff like Kindred was not on my July TBR but it could totally fit on my July TBR because it is fantasy written by a female author so that's my theme for July which I'm so so excited to get started on like I said I do have the ebook for The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. So I'll probably be starting that tonight. I wanted to finish Tagana first before I started that, but I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that. But as of right now, I'm reading Kindred and Tagana, and I'm hoping to start The Sword of Kaigen tonight. So that's my reading plans, and that's all I have for you guys right now. Florida. You have no idea how happy I am to be back here because wow, I probably worked more in the last two weeks than I ever did at my current location. I did get time to explore the city a little bit, so you probably saw some of that in the vlog, but it's time to close out this vlog. There was a lot of things that I did over the last couple of days because I think the last time I talked to you guys was Thursday, which I did a lot on Friday and Saturday. Friday, I did get to explore the city a little bit. And then Saturday, I had three car rides and two plane rides to go from New Orleans to Orlando. So I had just a lot, a lot of time. First of all, this mug is absolutely gorgeous. I absolutely love it. It says New Orleans on it. And then it has like the aesthetic of the French Quarter. And it's like all the way around the mug and it's gorgeous and I really really love it and that's why I decided to get a souvenir while I was in New Orleans I also did get a book too so I will get to that afterwards Thursday I think is the last time that I actually checked in with you guys and I was reading Kindred at the time by Octavia E Butler and oh my gosh Kindred is so so good it's about a black woman from the 1970s who's like traveling back and forth in time and it's between the 1970s and the antebellum South. And this book just checked so many boxes for me for something that I've been looking for in literature. Because I feel like a lot of times people in this day and age, they'll say things like, specifically the 1920s, I feel like is a decade that people are always like, oh, the 1920s were such a cool decade. I wish I can go back and live in the 1920s. Every time I hear someone say something like that, I'm just like, nope. 
I think I wouldn't have liked the 1920s that much. So this book kind of did what I wanted from it from whenever I hear people talk about the 1920s, but it did it with the Antebellum South, which is just even worse, I feel like. So I love that aspect of it. I do think it just kind of ended and I, I wanted more from the ending. So because of that, I ended up giving it 4.25 stars, but like it is seriously as devastating as you would expect for a black woman to be sent back to the antebellum south and it was great absolutely loved it butler is such a prolific writer and i cannot wait to get to more of her works so when i finished that one i needed to start a new one and i wanted an audiobook that was just easy to follow along with something that was light and light-hearted that like when i'm trying to figure out how to return the car to the rental car return I wouldn't get all flustered and all of that while I was doing that. So I decided to pick up an adult romantic contemporary. I just got in the hold from my library for Get a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert, which I read Get a Life Chloe Brown. I want to say a couple of months ago and I really enjoyed it. There are like a few things about the writing style that annoyed me in Chloe Brown, but they were all fixed in Danny Brown. Like I absolutely loved Get a Hint Danny Brown. It was so, so good. At least the first 80 or so percent of it. I I loved both of the characters so so much I loved their relationship like this was a romance that I really really felt from the very beginning and I absolutely loved that about it and also I feel like there were like some sexual innuendos and things like that throughout the story the way like a romance novel would be but it didn't bother me in this one the way it did in Chloe Brown and I felt like the sex scenes were done a lot better in this one around the 80% mark there's a conflict as happens in romance novels because you can't just have happy-go-lucky the entire time there has to be big massive fallout I didn't like it I did not like it at all I feel like when you have conflicts I want to feel like I could be on both sides of the conflict I want to feel as a reader that I could side with either of the characters and really feel and understand their emotions and all of that and with this one I was just kind of like very much on the side of one of the characters and the other one I was just like you're being really stupid right now stop being stupid if you weren't so stupid we would have no conflict but of course if there's no conflict then there's no book so like I understand why it's there and it was kind of the whole point of this novel but at the same time I thought the conflict was just very clean cliche romance sort of conflict that really really annoyed me so ended up dropping a star rating for that because this book was like on track for a five star rating for me like one of the first five star like romance novels that I've done in the longest while but I ended up giving it four stars I still think it's a fantastic book that is so happy and fun that people will love the ending man it really did turn me off from the book like really did so like I said I was traveling a lot yesterday which means I had a lot lot of time for audiobooks I didn't want to start a new one after I finished to get a hint Danny Brown so I decided to pick up the audiobook for Tigana by Guy Gabriel K got home last night I just sat down and finished it and this was so good I loved 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 the ending the ending really does make this book it was fantastic I absolutely loved it mind you I thoroughly enjoyed this book the entire time I didn't have a whole lot of thoughts on it because there wasn't a whole lot of things that I just like really wanted to talk about but I enjoyed every second of this book this book I feel like is very tailored towards my taste though so I can feel like people who have very similar tastes to me will probably really really love this book and then people who don't will probably be bored by this book because it's very very politically driven like low fantasy book but mm, so so good and I really really loved it so I ended up giving this one five stars fantastic I feel like my reading towards the end of the month has gotten so much better than it started out at the beginning of this month because I think I ended up finishing like 14 bucks in June or something like that my, my June wrap-up will be coming out tomorrow so I'll have more of that for you guys tomorrow but like until Tigana and then I think one of the volumes of Saga that I read this week I have like zero five-star books not counting rereads so Ugh, yeah June wasn't the best month for me but I think overall I'm happy with it oh and lastly I wanted to talk quickly about the bookstores a little bit there were five bookstores in the French Quarter I got to visit two of them the other three were closed because of COVID which made me really sad but the two that I got to visit was Beckham House Books which is like a used bookstore which is a very like kind of small store and it's mostly used books mostly non-fiction from what I saw so I really enjoyed it but at the same time like there wasn't really anything there 
that I wanted to like actually pick up even though I really wanted to support some of the local bookstores I did get to go to Faulkner House Books though which has an interesting sort of history because it was named because William Faulkner actually lived in the French Quarter when he first started his career which is really cool I've never read any of William Faulkner's work but I remember in college like a lot of the students in my like creative writing classes really loved William Faulkner because he's more like literary fiction because he's very much about like words and the playing with words and things like that and he can write absolutely nothing with the plot and like with zero characters and yet people still read it because his writing style is so interesting and unique and beautiful so i've always wanted to read some of his works because of that but yeah i didn't know that he um stayed in the french quarter so that's really really cool i did want to try and buy one of his books while it was in the faulkner house book but unfortunately they were like really expensive so instead i decided to pick up the gothic tales of hp lovecraft obviously by hp lovecraft the reason why i decided to pick this up is because one because fall is just around the corner and hp lovecraft is a great author to read in the fall because he's kind of like a classic horror author also this book is gorgeous look at that it's absolutely gorgeous i love that it's like a naked hardback but it's like a gorgeous naked hardback all of the short stories that it has in here are ones that i've never heard of i have a compendium of lovecraft short stories it's like the essential tales of hp lovecraft i think and i guess they're they're his most popular ones and i've read most of them now but like when i opened this one i was just like i don't recognize any of these so i was like okay cool lovecraft is an author that i really enjoy i like the way he writes he's definitely very shocked in the way that he writes because he has kind of like this dry writing style that just like kind of comes out of nowhere and shocks you which I really really enjoy and yeah I have never seen this book anywhere else like I've never seen these short stories anywhere else so yeah I thought it was a great find and I got to support a local bookstore at the same time so I'm really excited to have this so that is all I have for you guys this week I hope you guys enjoyed watching I post videos on Sundays Tuesdays Thursdays and Saturdays so consider subscribing I also post bonus videos so if you want to be notified as soon as they upload you can click that little bell icon if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up to support my channel all social media links are in the description down below thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time next time. Bye.